Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech and welcome to another episode of Ash Talks. So today I'm going to try to address one of the most commonly asked questions on my videos. I import and review a lot of phones like this Mi 5S Plus for example and on every one of those videos I get multiple comments. The same kind of comments. What is your final cost? How much customs did you pay? Can you tell me what I'll have to pay if I buy this in rupees? Why are you not telling us the amount? Why is it that you can't mention it? And there's a reason why I don't. So in this video, let's talk about that. My name is Ash. You're watching Ash Talks. Let's get started. Okay, that was great for our intro, uh, but you know what? We are not just going to talk about why I don't mention customs costs. We're going to talk about uh, how to buy stuff online as an internationally and how it works. If you've seen my earlier video on the same subject, you know, you can actually skip this because there's not a lot that's changed, but it's been almost two years since I made that video and a lot of people keep asking me for a refreshed version and I'm tired of saying not much has changed in uh, the comments. There's a little bit that's changed. Anyway, we'll talk about that now. So first off, what are the kind of things you should import? Uh, cases, uh, not tempered glass, definitely not tempered glass. Most of the times it gets broken at, in shipping uh, unless you buy like 10 or 15 of them in bulk. Uh, cases, definitely um, any small kind of stuff you see. Okay, in this room, what do I have that's imported? My LED lights are imported. My cable management sleeves are imported. Um, those bobble heads are imported. The Atomos recorder is imported. So yeah, quite a few things. So generally the low value stuff like the cable management sleeves or replacement cables or uh, docks for your uh, for, for multi-port charge docks or batteries, these are things I import. These are things I recommend you import. Why? Because the price difference is worth going undergoing the hassle of importing and the time that you need to wait. So generally let's start with timelines. When you import something not via DHL and FedEx, we are not talking about the private companies, we're just talking about regular slow post, your regular mail, your uh, whatever post options you get, Hong Kong post, Singapore post, whatever it is. If you import it using any of these methods, the wait time is anywhere between two weeks to two months. Mostly it's going to be around two to four weeks, but till it, but it can take as long as eight weeks or sometimes even more. But that is the kind of uh, timeline you're going to expect. Till eight weeks, you don't have to worry about it. If it runs lo longer than that, then yes, that's when you need to start uh, contacting customs. Let's get to that in a bit. So the first thing, if you have the patience for it, import it. But the price difference is a lot in most cases, like LED strips uh, or TPU cases, there's a lot of difference. For example, I wanted to buy 18650 batteries. I vape and for my vaporizer, I wanted to buy 18650 batteries and they were priced at, I wanted specific branded ones like Samsung and LG ones and those were priced at around uh, 1000 rupees per battery in India or 800 rupees. And I actually bought it for around 2000 rupees for four of the batteries. For the small things uh, like batteries and stuff, usually you don't get built customs for it. You don't get charged for it 80% of the times. The other 20% of the times you do get charged for it. Uh, and the postman will just collect it when he's delivering uh, the product to you. You don't have to go to the customs office or go anywhere. You can just pay cash. Uh, and you can't really order internationally via cash on delivery. I know it sounds simple to you, but I have received a lot of questions. Uh, many times people have asked me, can you order via cash on delivery internationally? You cannot do that. Uh, but the customs charges, you can pay it as cash when, when the postman comes to deliver it to you. Okay, now moving on to higher value items that you're gonna order via FedEx or DHL or TNT or any of that. For these, Again, DHL or FedEx will handle it. They will bring the product, the package to your doorstep and that's where you're going to pay them. But before that, there is a KYC initiative. You need to uh, submit your address and ID proofs. 
with fed with the with dhl it is kind of simple there's just a kyc uh website i'll leave a link to it in the description you just need to go there enter your uh, details log in with the otp just and submit your uh, address proof id proof and enter your tracking number and that's it done D dhl will handle the entire customs clearance and they will end up giving it to you with fedex it's a little different you need to reach out to them get them to send you a mail you need to print it out you need to fill forms you need to sign it and then again email it back to them and then they'll get that resolved so i, I generally don't do tnt because tnt has issues with shipping batteries uh, for those who followed me for over two years you know that i had issues in the past so the next question is there any way around customs no you need to pay customs so how much customs why am i not mentioning the amount i paid for phones okay so let's just okay this phone mi 5s plus which is what i'm currently testing i paid around 9000 rupees customs for this and the mi 5s i got both in the same package but the leico cool one which is a much cheaper phone i paid around 5000 rupees customs for that alone a single package and for the LG G4, I paid around 9,500 rupees. For my Atomos, uh, I paid around 15,000 rupees, I guess. And for a handy cam that I bought, I paid 25,000 rupees. For a screen protector, a tempered glass uh, screen protector, I paid 1,200 rupees. So it varies. There, there have been times where I've bought the same product twice. Okay, I actually got a Redmi Pro 64 gig variant and a 32 gig variant, and the customs charges were totally different. I don't remember how much it is exactly, but it was either 2000 rupees for this and 4000 for the other or 1500 and 3000. It was double. That's what I remember. So customs charges vary a lot. It varies from person to person. It is not very standardized. And that's why I don't want to mislead people. It's very easy for me to say what I paid, but then I don't want you to go ahead and place an order expecting this is how much I'll get billed and then get billed higher. I mean, if you get billed lower, that's awesome. Uh, but I don't want you to, uh, you know, that is the reason why I'm shooting this video dedicated. Uh, you know, I'd probably get more views if I sat and shot a video about the Mi 5S Plus, but end of the day, I want to make sure that, you know, YouTube is all about you guys. I've said this in multiple videos. Uh, so hope you guys do find this video useful. Anyway, coming back, another important point that I wanted to bring up is there are some people who tell you you need an import export code an iec code in order to import stuff and that is totally wrong for any private like any personal imports that you want to do you don't need an iec code uh it's there on the dgft website the direct rate what is that now uh the direct rate general of foreign trade the official website uh, i'll leave a link to that as well in the description it says you do not need an IEC code. There's, it's, there's an exemption if uh, exception if you're just uh, importing for your personal usage, which is what most of you guys are going to be doing. And there was recently something floating around. Even I retweeted it about no no charges on stuff below fifty thousand rupees. That's not come into effect. I don't even know if that is exactly what it was, but anything below fifty thousand rupees, I'm still being I'm still paying customs on it. If that changes, I'll shoot a video. Uh, definitely shoot a video of me just going there i mean me just doing this because that's how happy i will be if i don't have to pay customs because i pay a lot of customs charges one more common question i get is what about warranty most of the times when you import stuff internationally unless and until it says very clearly international warranty you are not getting warranty for most phones 99.9% .9 of the phones that you import you do not get warranty Okay, another thing worth noting is if you're buying something from the United States, generally you cannot track it past the point where it leaves the US. Whereas when you buy something from China via Hong Kong Post or Singapore Post, you can track it uh, till your post office. You can do that as well. Uh, so my two cents here is the small items, the TPU cases and the cable sleeves and the LED lights and stuff like that. Do order it. The sites I'd recommend would be fasttech.com. I don't have an affiliate with them, so I wouldn't make any money, but end of the day, it's a great site. <clears throat> uh, eBay.com, and I do have an affiliate account with them, so I'll leave that in the description. If you want, you can use that. Uh, Banggood is decent for some, some products. 
and aliexpress aliexpress is different wherein they don't accept paypal you will have to pay only via the credit card directly so you don't get paypal guarantee with aliexpress the other three uh do allow for paypal transactions uh and what if your product gets lost more often than not the sellers are quite decent and they do refund you uh, for me my nubia z11 did get lost and the seller refunded me but minus shipping so i did have to lose out on shipping a slider that i bought from china uh, via aliexpress.com it had some issues as in like it was uh, cosmetically there were some scratches and what not i did create a case and it took around 3 months to resolve get resolved but i did get uh, around 20% off they did give me an offer to ship it back but then again the return shipping is always on you shipping a phone out costs around 4000 rupees via dhl or fedex so that's too expensive anyway my two cents for the small items do buy it uh internationally because generally you don't get customs on it and you get great deals but for the big ones like phones and what not wait for the product to launch in india if you are importing make sure that you're getting a great deal always whatever your final costs uh, say it's a 200 uh, dollar phone expect if you're okay paying 300 dollars for it then buy it at least 50% because shipping will there will be costs associated with it there will be customs and exchange charges generally vary between 2 and a half to 4 and a half percent depending on what you're using to pay so uh, i my recommendation would be to not try to import phones or uh, a laptop or whatever unless and until extremely necessary to give you some ex- examples of when it might be necessary uh my edel crown slider when i approached someone in india and they quoted me almost 2x the price that it's being sold for in the us in this case actually 2.2x so in this case i paid for extra shipping i did have it shipped to a package forwarder and then i had it sent to india and including customs and everything i still saved about uh 20 25% of the price so uh, again with the atomos or rather the ninja flame that i'm recording on over here this is something where and when i bought it i still see ended up saving around 30 35000 rupees despite importing and paying about 15000 rupees customs on it so you just need to compare and always go and go on ready to pay 50% more than whatever you see over there as the final price uh, when you're importing if you're importing via amazon uh, .com then if it's fulfilled by amazon they do have the customs charges and everything mentioned so that's the only place that i know of where your customs charges are pre mentioned you know what exactly you're paying for if you feel there is something i haven't clarified if you feel there is a doubt on uh some aspect of what i've talked about let me know in the comments below i will try to get back to you in the comments if needed i should a follow up video on the same so hope the hope you found this video useful if you did give this video a thumbs up if you didn't vote it down and for more videos like this please hit that subscribe button down below if you have any constructive criticism whatsoever again let me know via the comments i'm very open to constructive criticism um i mean i really want to know what you guys think Even if you don't have any constructive criticism please do leave a comment I'd love to know what you think and if you don't have the time to comment at least a thumbs down thumbs up works so that's it thanks for watching till next time this is Ashia from C4E Tech signing off you guys have a great day bye bye now